Hi everybody, today let's create a simple wireless project of turning on an LED by pressing a button. Today, we're going to be using a button on one builder base to turn on the LED tied to another builder base. And if you haven't already, make sure you have completed the server setup, which you can also find online. First, we'll plug in our builder bases to a power source. For this video, we're using a micro USB cable plugged into a wall adapter. Now that we see the LEDs blinking green, this means that they're ready to use. Now that the builder bases are powered up, let's go to our server and configure them. If you don't know the address of your server, see the previous tutorial on setting up your queue server. From the main screen, select the devices icon in the tools panel on the left side of the screen. Next, click on the unpaired tab at the top of the list. You'll see that there are two unidentified clients in the list. We'll need to use one for the LED and one for the button. To connect the clients, go to the device, click on the three dots and select pair. It'll take a few seconds for the client to be attached. Next, we'll do this process for the other client. Now, when you click on the paired tab, you'll see the two clients. Next, let's identify the builder bases from the list. First, click the actions icon for the first device and select identify. You'll notice that the builder base tied to that ID will blink red and green. Once you know which device is which, we'll want to give them names. To do that, let's go to actions, edit, and then give it a name. The first device we will name button and then click save. Now we'll do the same for the next builder base. Let's identify the device real quick, just to make sure that we have the right builder base. This one we'll call LED. And if you forget which client is which, just use the identify command again. Now we have connected and named our builder bases. Now we're ready to build the circuit. To build your circuit, you can either follow along or view our digital blueprint of the breadboard in the video description below. If you never worked with LEDs or buttons, just remember to check out our support page for more information. For now, you can just follow along without any problems. Before we start wiring, let's turn off the builder bases because it's never a good idea to connect wires with the power on. Let's do the LED first. First, we'll take the LED and place it on the breadboard. Notice the LED has a pin that is longer than the other. The long end is the positive side and the shorter end is the negative side. Now place the LED on the breadboard, keeping in mind which pin is the positive and negative. I like to start with the ground first when making circuits. So let's connect a 100 ohm resistor from the negative side of the LED to the ground rail on the breadboard. And then we will insert a black wire to the end of the ground rail. Now let's connect the power. To make this look cleaner, we'll add a small jumper wire from the positive side of the LED to the power rail on the breadboard. And then we'll insert an input wire at the end of the power rail. To connect the circuit to the builder base, we'll connect the orange wire on the end of the power rail to the GPIO zero terminal on the builder base. You can use any GPIO terminal, just remember which one you use when we create the firmware and then attach the ground to one of the ground terminals on the builder base. Now we have finished the LED circuit. Next, we'll wire the button circuit. First, place the button on the breadboard. Just remember that the terminals across from each other are actually connected together. In this example, we will wire the button as being pulled down. This means that when the button is not pressed, the GPIO pin it is connected to will be driven to ground. When the button is pressed, the pin will be driven to five volts. Like I said before, I like to start by grounding the circuit. So let's connect a 10K ohm resistor from the bottom right side of the button to the ground rail. Then insert a black jumper wire to the bottom of the ground rail. Next, we will insert the input wire to the bottom left side of the button. Finally, use a small jumper cable to connect the power from the top right side of the button to the power rail. Then, insert a red wire to the end of the power rail.
Now we can connect the three wires from the breadboard to the builder base. First, we will connect the black wire to the ground terminal. Now we'll take the yellow wire and connect it to the GPIO zero terminal. Remember, you can use any GPIO input on the builder base. Just remember which one you use when we create the firmware. Finally, we can take the red wire from the power rail and connect it to the five volt terminal on the builder base. Now we have completed the button circuit. Next, let's power the clients back on and start creating the firmware. To write the firmware, we go to the main page of our server and select the firmware icon in the tools panel on the left side of the screen. Let's create the LED firmware first. Select the create new button at the top of the screen. We'll name this file LEDFW for firmware. Now click the add device button. You might be wondering what a device is. The device is a single piece of hardware that we are adding to the client. Some devices can use more than one GPIO pin, and you can actually add as many devices as we have GPIO pins on the builder base. We can find a device by searching or scrolling through the list. The device we're looking for is the LED in the display section. Click that item and we can enter a name in the field at the bottom. For this one, we'll call it My LED. And then at the end, click the Add Device button. Now we need to set a number of properties for the device so the firmware will build correctly. Select the down arrow, click on the driver pop-up to see the different drivers, and then we'll select the GPIO. Next, we need to select the pin. We'll use GP0 since we wired it that way earlier on the builder base. Finally, under Mode, click Initially Low, and then click Save. Now we have created the LED firmware. Next, we'll make the firmware file for the button in a similar way. First, click on Create New, name it Button FW, just so we know which device is using this firmware, and then click Create. Again, click Add Hardware. This time we'll search for button. We'll name this device My Button, and then click Add Device. Now go to the driver pop-up and select GPIO. For the pin, select a GP0 or the pin you used on the builder base. For button debouncing, click Enabled. Finally, for pin mode, select Input Pull Down. We selected Input Pull Down because we wired the button to a pull down resistor while wiring the breadboard. Click Save and now we're ready to upload the firmware. We can actually upload firmware either by starting with the firmware file or starting with the device. For this video, we'll be uploading from the firmware file. Now we'll upload the LED file first. Select Actions for the LED firmware that we created and click Upload. Then choose the LED client in the list and click Upload. While we wait for the LED firmware to upload, we can actually upload the button firmware at the same time. Instead of LED, select the button device and then click Upload. The notifications panel on the right side will show the progress and it will usually take a few minutes and you'll see the LEDs on the client change as it reboots. Now that we see that the firmware has been uploaded, we can create the app. Now we can create a simple application to get the clients to talk to each other. Click the applications icon in the toolbar on the left, click create new and give your application a name. I'm going to call it button LED, then click create. Let's start by dragging the hardware objects representing the LED and button onto the screen. Search or click the hardware tab and look for the button under the display section and drag it onto the canvas. And then do the same for LED. You'll see that the button and the LED object have only one port. Arrange the object so the ports line up easily. Click on the output port of the button and then drag it to the LED input port. You'll see a line appear linking the two ports. Now whenever a message comes from the button, it will be sent to the LED. Click on the Save App button at the top of the screen, and then click the Return to My Apps button. To start the application, press the Play icon next to our Button LED app. This will then take us to the mapping screen. 
What mapping does is that it maps a hardware object in your application to a particular client and device on your network. The mapper will look for devices that are compatible with a hardware object and present you with a list to select from. The first hardware object to map is the LED. Notice the red caution icon. Click on the item and you will see where you can select the device and driver. Click on the pop-up and there will only be one client to choose from. Click done and notice the green check mark. But we'll do the same for the button. Again, there's only one device to choose from. The status should show a green check mark once you're done. Click the save and run button to start the app. Finally, we can test our network. Make sure your builder bases are plugged in, then push the button on your breadboard and the LED will light up. We hope you enjoyed this video. Check out the rest of our videos, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and click the notification button for updates. You can also follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.